Now I've got a pretty cool bug for you today, and since I don't have a lot of history on this one, I mean, there are a lot of bugs out there called crippled midges. Stick around after the tie. I wanna show you one of the things that I do on the stream that can help me determine what kind of bugs I should be using. But before that, today's tie, I got it from Randall Scott Stetzer's Flies the Best 1000. It was created by Greg Carrier. Now it's a really simple pattern, but a pretty cool tie. I think y'all are gonna like it. Let's give it a shot. So there we go in the vise, a crippled midge. Pretty simple little pattern, but kind of cool looking. Now I'm tying this on a size 14 and I've used this hook before. This is a J Stockard model 430. It's a 3X long curve shank hook. It's one of my favorite hooks. I'll tie down to a 20 for nymphs, um, up to size four for streamers, and then everything in between. My hoppers are on this one, about eights, tens, and twelves. So I'll try to link in the description what about this hook and uh, where you can get it. But white thread, I wanna lay a base down well around the bend. And the rib on this guy, extra small copper wire. I'm gonna catch it in up front. You probably don't have to, but it will help us to keep this underbody consistent going all the way back. Okay, I think that is gonna be long enough of a body. So we'll leave our thread right here at the back, and then let's take our white Antron. And this one I have right here is on a spool. A lot of it is not on a spool, but either way, just take one of these strands and let's catch it in right here on the back. And you can leave it long to begin with. We'll, we'll trim it to size here shortly, but you don't want to catch it in with too many wraps back here. Let's go with two wraps. Watch the front of this, but we do want to keep it on top. Okay, so there's two wraps right there. Now I'm gonna take my thread right back up here, pretty far up, a couple eye lengths back. Let's try to keep that wire out of the way here. Now I'm just gonna wrap this Antron up. And you can kind of treat it like a thread or a thick yarn, meaning you can spin it clockwise if you want it to get, to cord it up a little bit and get it thicker. I'm purposely trying not to. I'm gonna leave it flat and then go all the way up and then maybe halfway back down to get just a little bit of a taper. I don't want a huge taper on this, but I do want a little bit of one. See how it's spreading out on me right there? Uh, and that's fine, as long as it's not spreading out too far. If it was getting too far on you, you'd probably need to, you know, give it a clockwise spin. So I think that is going to work right there. Now I want it to be pretty thin as I go back up, just so I don't, well, now it's starting to really spread out on me. But we're fine, we'll, we'll survive that. Okay, so let's go ahead and catch it off up here just a couple wraps and snip this excess now that white right there is more than we're going to have showing but that's fine uh, we can wrap our peacock curl over the the first bit of it so the front half of our body or thorax call it what you will is peacock curl so i'm going to catch it in Let's go ahead, you can probably either snip these or just cut them. I've got three, so I'm gonna go ahead and cut them. But you'll want to take it pretty far back. I'd say it's more than two thirds white, one third peacock curl. And I would say it's almost half and half. So let's go with about right there. I think that's gonna be fine. Now we'll take our thread right back up here. I've got a little jump right there, but I'm gonna leave my thread in the back and I'm gonna kind of spin this hurl together, not real tight, just a few twists to keep it from spreading out on me, but I'm gonna leave my thread back here where I'm starting this, and if it does start to split up on me, that thread will hold it together. Okay, I think that is enough. Maybe I should have gone one more wrap with the hurl, but you know what, I think we're gonna be fine right there. And this hurl is getting a little bit thick on me, so I'm definitely not gonna just break that. I'm gonna snip it. And a few extra wraps right here to just really lock it in. Now, let's go ahead and counter wrap this rib. 
and I'm not sure what this does for you on the white. It might give you a little bit of segmentation. Probably doesn't add much flash. It is an extra small wire, but it's definitely going to make this hurl just a little bit more durable. So I got a couple wraps right there. I'm gonna let my wire go forward. A couple more wraps. Now I can spin this off without risking it unraveling on me. And now let's go ahead and trim this tail because we really want it really short. Just a, a small wisp of a tail right there. You might even crinkle it up a little bit if you want. Now let's get our thread right to the front of this hurl. I think that right here is gonna work. And take two little tips of white hackle. And they're not long. You'll see that with a lot of cripples. They have just little short stubby wings, maybe a little bit past that hurl, but not much past it. So let's catch these in with a, a pinch wrap right on top. Okay, and I think that is gonna be fine. Maybe I should have laid them flat, but you know what? I think we're gonna be just fine. Now snip this excess right here off. And I'm gonna spend a few wraps right here just trying to smooth this area out because we are putting a couple wraps of hackle here. And the hackle, the same white I was using right there. You don't have to get too fancy or crazy on this. I'm not really even worried about catching it in perpendicular. I'm just gonna catch it in right there in front of those wings and make sure I get enough wraps to secure it. I think that's enough right there. Now let's put two wraps on it. Um, again, not a lot of hackle, maybe two and a half, or we'll, we'll see what two looks like for us right there. I think that's gonna be enough. I'm gonna catch it off right there, right behind the eye, but we're going to sweep it back. So I'll go ahead and snip this off and then we'll take care of those fibers when we work on our head. And what I mean by take care of them is just try to pull them all back and take a couple wraps going back right here. Just try to get them all. They're short, so it's gonna take a little bit of dexterity here. And I'm not getting them all, but I think I'm getting enough. Take my thread right back behind the eye and then try to get a, a smooth head right here. Just enough to get a drop of UV resin to finish it off. And there we go, I think we're fine. I got one crazy fiber going forward right there. I'll be able to take care of that. Either snip it or singe it off here in just a second. So any cleanup on this? Yeah, probably. Got a couple of those fibers right there I can take care of before putting the head cement on it. But otherwise, I think we got a fishable fly. So that's it, my friends. I appreciate you watching. Y'all take care and we'll see you next time. Okay, that was pretty fun. Now here's the bonus material. Here's one of the things that I do on the stream that usually it will, you know, increase my odds of having a better day. So first off, take your landing net. And I hope all of you guys fish with a landing net. It's generally a pretty good idea. Then take your mosquito net. Now, if you don't have one of these, get one of these. They're about $2 on Amazon and it could be a lifesaver in summer when the bugs are out. But what you do, you just take this and then put it over your landing net. And they're just about the perfect size for, you know, putting over your landing net. It's even, usually most of them have a drawstring cord right here. So you pull this tight and there you've got your, your scene, which is the, the perfect little apparatus for going out and catching nymphs in the water. So what you do with the net, you just walk out into some current, not too deep or too fast. I mean, if you try to put in two feet of water and really fast current, you're gonna stick it down in there and it's gonna rip it right out of your hand. But maybe about 18 inches of water and, and moderately fast current, but preferably with a bottom that's either rocky or gravel, you know, where the nymphs are gonna be living. Then you just push it down into the bottom, put your boot a foot or so in front of it, and stir up the gravel, kick some up and let all the current drift right through the net. Then take a look and see what you've caught in the net. Now you might already have an idea of what to expect. I mean, depending on the water you're in or the time of year, you could be expecting all kinds of different mayflies or maybe some stoneflies or caddis nymphs. 
But where this can really help you is determining the size of them, or even the color. I mean, are the golden stoneflies really gold, really yellow, or are they more of an amber or even a light brown? Or are the bugs that you're looking at less than half an inch long or maybe three quarters of an inch long? And that can make a big difference on how effective your flies are. Now this little tactic can help you in the here and now on determining what you're gonna tie on right then. But if you wanna take it the extra step, get you some of these little sample bottles. These little vials right here, this is a two dram uh, container. And oftentimes I will just take the nymphs home that I, that I catch and uh, you know tie some imitations there and not necessarily create new patterns but maybe look at that fly and flip through some of my books and say this is a nymph i should have been fishing today now if you do that keep in mind that one of these with with creek water in it it's only going to last you about three days and then the the bug will start deteriorating and then eventually start stinking so if you want to keep them long term you need to use some kind of preservative or alcohol mixture so that's it hope this little tip helps some of you i know it's helped me Thanks for watching, everybody. Y'all take care. See you in a couple days.